Thank you, Erwin. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. <laughs> uh, I want to thank everyone here, in particular Jane, for the honor of introducing, opening uh, this press conference. It, it's, it is truly an honor. I'm with uh, people here who, in some ways, are everyday people, but they're everyday people who've lived and are living extraordinary lives. They pushed past barriers that brought them into the child welfare system, and then they pushed past the barriers of the child welfare system that's often unforgiving, and they've become successful. And when I say successful, I say they've set goals for themselves, and they're achieving them. It's remarkable. This is a remarkable group of people, and that's not lost on me, and it shouldn't be lost on the province of Ontario. More so remarkably, there are people who are willing to use their courage to say to the public and to government that we were in care. That is also remarkable because until now, it's been very difficult to do. And they are setting an example for many, many others that there is no shame in being in care. In fact, we're living extraordinary lives if we can tell you we've been in care. And more so, they're willing to use their lived experience as a source of wisdom for the province. And I know full well, because I've spent my career fortunately enough to be able to listen to young people, particularly children in care, that they carry a great deal of wisdom and lived experience is a legitimate source. And it's their voice and their energy and their place at the table that is going to create fundamental change that is sorely needed for so many children and youth who come into our system. So I thank you again for the honor to be here with you. And I'll introduce Jane, who um, is a powerhouse. And Ontario and our systems need to watch her and listen to her because she's leading. And my office, Jane, and to all of you, will continue to walk and support you and, and your journey for fundamental change in child welfare. So thank you, and thank you. Here you go, Jane. Thank you so much, Erwin, for that introduction and those kind words to all of us here who are brave enough to stand and be at this press conference this morning. I'm, of course, Jane Koverikova. I'm a PhD candidate at Western University. I'm also the president of the new Child Welfare Political Action Committee Canada, or the Child Welfare PAC, and I was a former youth in care. We are launching the Child Welfare PAC today to stand up for better futures for kids who are aging out of the child protection system. Last year, I conducted research on how youth fare after a life by, raised by the system. I was left sickened by the dark futures facing youth in their adult lives. More disturbing, these results, these consistent results, were 40 years across time of study across countries. They were the same. That's what disturbed me the most. Last year, I conducted, well, this is why I created the Child Welfare Pack, to compel politicians to redesign the child protection system so that youth succeed after care. We want to work collaboratively with all politicians. Child welfare is not a partisan issue. We all own this. Our group here, standing behind me, consists of mayors, lawyers, businessmen and women, comedians, and academics. We've all spent part of our childhoods in child protection. Despite the system, we fought really hard to be here today. Just like the research shows, many of us struggled with typical outcomes right after care, like poverty, homelessness, unemployment, jail, gang life, substance abuse, mental health challenges, and early parenthood, and all of us loneliness when we were left on our own, sometimes as early as age 16. But we know it doesn't have to stay that way. The solution to breaking the cycle is an evidence-based and outcomes-focused system. So put another way, we're asking for politicians to check their parenting, to check their impact, and to create better futures for youth leaving care. In Ontario, the government has never systematically measured youth outcomes after care. So if you don't know what happens after, how do you know what you did before worked? As such, current policy is not rooted in evidence. 
It is a mosaic of well-intentioned guesses with life-destroying consequences. Unsurprisingly, the results have stayed the same year to year with youth struggling after care. The opportunity cost to society is too high to send capable people off into their adulthood without the skills to thrive. We are offering our real life and professional expertise to help build a foundation that allows for all policies going forward in this sector to be based on evidence and focused on bettering youth outcomes. To sum up, we're asking politicians, the system architects, to join us in creating an evidence-based and outcomes-driven system in child welfare so that every youth has the opportunity to have a bright future. Thank you. Thank you, Jane, and uh, thanks to all of your colleagues here for inviting me to be the final speaker on today's agenda. I congratulate you for all that you've done and accomplished here today. My name is Wendy Miller. I'm the senior program, I'm the senior, pardon me, manager of government and stakeholder relations at the Ontario Association of Children's Aid Societies. And I'd like to start by echoing the words that we've heard from Jane and from Irwin. I know that we all want the same things for the young people who we serve and who are in our care. We have different roles to play, but we have the same aspirations. However, your very presence here today forces us to remember that our work is not just the protection of children, it's also the nurturing and the caring of the people who we care for and who we, who we are responsible for. Um, as, to, as the comments that we've been hearing clearly demonstrate, the work of children's aid societies is designed primarily to focus on protection, but equally critical to our mandate are the well-being and nurturing of the people in our care. Um, as we've been hearing, how are we supposed to know if we are achieving this aspect of our mandate if we don't actually hear from you, the adults and all of your peers who over decades became adults after spending time in our care? We know our approaches have gaps. We do not always focus sufficiently on preparing the young people in our care to be whole, thriving, happy, engaged and responsible adults. Currently, Children's Aid Societies need to change and learn from your research and from the lived experience of the adults who once were in our care. We can do better and we are sincerely trying to do better. We have new legislation coming soon that, that will demand that we do better and that we act differently in how we deliver our services. But as I've said, there is a design flaw in our system. Clearly, Children's Aid Societies are only one element of a different, better, evidence-informed approach. We need the whole community, we need the whole of government and the whole of Ontario to achieve this goal. Children's aid societies are required to play the role of parents, but an institutional parent is inherently inadequate. The young people we care for need our collective best ideas, creativity, energy, enthusiasm and love to become the adults they are meant to be. I will bring these words and the work of your PAC and all of your research back to my colleagues and encourage you to continue to hold us accountable to do better. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I don't know if anyone has questions, but otherwise we'll wrap up. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>